So I'll try to add a little something with their blessings. So with your permission, Maharaj. Vadanti tattapavidas tattam yajjyanam advayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Shantite Shukadev is a Sutta Goswami part. In his humility, he did not say, I know the absolute truth. But he said, Vadanti tat means they say, those persons who know the truth, this is what they say. Very humbly. Those persons, tatvavida, the tatvavida, those who know the truth, they say that that truth is the advaya dhyan tattva, supreme conscious being who is the advaya, non-dual reality. And he is experienced by transcendentalists in three different ways. The Pratamic, the first experience, is Brahman. Then, Paramatma, Ishwar, whose leader it is to make the Shrishti, the creation. And finally, the highest, or fullest experience of the Supreme Truth is Bhagavan. Not the Supreme Lord in relation to this world, creating this world, but the Supreme Lord in His own world. So, these three aspects of the truth, being Advaita, beyond duality, can only be realized by those persons whose consciousness is beyond duality. Yesham to antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvandva moha nirmukta bhajantimam vridavrataha In Gita, Sri Krishna said, those persons who yesham to antakatam papam their pap, their sins have been destroyed janaram punya kamanam and in this life and previous lives they have done punya punya karma pious activity here punya karma does not mean actual pious fruitive activity here punya karma means sadhu sangha who've had the association of Mahabhagat Vaishnavas in this life and the previous life and received sanskars from them. Without sanskars from the last life and not just little sanskar, sanskar all the way up to rati from the last life, you cannot experience rasa in this life. Prakta naduniti chasti Yasya Sad Bhakti Vasana. It is said, Bhakta, in the previous life, Aduniki, and in this life, Yasya Sad Bhakti Vasana, those who have the samskars, impressions, up to the point of Rati, then for them, then, Tameva, they have the possibility of rasa aswadan, tasting rasa. So rasa is not a very simple thing to understand. In fact, now Krishna is saying, Taitvan Mamoha Nirmukta Bhajanti Mantridaha Prata. Not only is the person free from pap sins, not only is the person have the impressions from Sadhu Sangha in the previous life and this life, but Dwanva Moha Nirmukta, they are free from Dwanva Moha duality. They don't have bodily conception, identification with this body. They are not affected by the dualities of happiness and distress, victory and defeat, honor and dishonor, loss and gain. They are free from Dwanva. Male and female, all these dualities, not affected by them. Bhajanti Mam Tridabrata, those persons, they very firmly do my bhajan, see Krishna says. 
So all the three aspects, realizations of the one absolute truth, to realize any of them, one has to be in Dwanva Moha Nirmukta, free from duality, because it's Advaitattva. So consider this fact. Only to have a glimpse of Brahman, you have to be free from Dwanva, duality. And you have to be more qualified to realize Paramatma. And you have to be even more qualified to realize Bhagavan. And you have to be even more qualified to realize his most confidential Purna Shakti. That's the subject we're discussing today. So one should not proudly think, yes, now I'm going to understand everything about Radharani. When even it's uncertain whether we can get a glimpse of Brahman, because our consciousness is still affected by Dwandwa. Hmm? Therefore, these subjects of Raghamark and Raghavan Krishna in Vrindavan, they should be approached with the greatest Adar. Adar means honor. Giving pranam. Like, this is why we, you should learn the six prayers of Buddhaji. In the end, he says, Bande Nanda Brajay Srinam Pada Reinu Bhikshasa Yasam Harikatut Gitam Punati Bhuvanam Trayam. He's pointing his finger towards the gopis in the distance, and his hand is trembling. I say, Bande Nanda. I am offering prayers to one particle of dust on the feet of the young gopis of Braja. Continuously, continuously, I am praying to that dust. When they sing the glories of Krishna, they purify all the three worlds. So, having the highest honor for the Braja Devis, Bajangana, Goparamani, beloved of Krishna, then, though we may not be qualified, but if we have honor, then we can hear something. Then we are very lucky. Gurudev used to say, Koi mastriyava na chiriya vyavachara dushta Krishna ko traisa paramatma ni rudha bhava nan vashro nu bajato vidaso pisaksha sriyastano tevita raja ni bopa yukta It's also from the, the six prayers of Buddha. Buddha is looking at the gopis and saying, where are these Braja gopis? And where am I? They are on the top of Mount Everest of praying. And I am at the bottom. I cannot even see the top. I try to understand what their love is like with my intelligence. I am like a man who was trying to see the top of a mountain. But what happened? Look, his hat fell off. That was my booty, my intelligence failed fell to the ground. We are not even close to the level, the standard of bhakti and realization of Buddha. And Buddha is saying, my intelligence collapsed, failed. Uddho suddho ho gayo braja go pin ki bo jnana bajayi dug dugi braja prema ka do One bridge pass poem is there. Uddho suddho ho gayo Uddhav became Shuddha, became purified. Of what? His Nishta in the Aishwarya of Krishna. Thinking that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He knows that, he realizes it. He came to Braja. But when he heard the Prema Lak, the loving words of Braj Gopis crying in separation from Krishna, then those words, Punati Bhuvanatrayam, they purified him. Hmm? So, Jnana Bajayi Dukta Ghi Bhaja Prem Hadol. In Vedic times, if there's a competition, you know, sometimes the king is there and there's some duel between some Kattriyas. They have a martial arts competition, you know, like Pandavas and, and, the, and, the, and the Kauravas did in front of their Guru Dronacharya. So then when they have a competition, then when the winner is announced, they beat the whole big drum, boom, 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 it announces you are the winner. And when the loser is announced, they have another drum called the Dug Dugi. Mm. 
Dug, 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 dug. That means the loser. Ah. <laughs> so, udo, sudo, ho, gayo. Brother go pin ki bo. Gyan bajai, dug, dug. Oh, you have Aishwarya gyan. You have the Aishwarya Mishrit Bhakti for Krishna. Dug, 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 dug. Fail. <laughs> so the Dug Dugi was playing for Gyan of Udav and Baja Brain Kadol and the door was ringing announcing loudly to the universe the great glory of the love of Gopis of Brindavan which has no touch of Aishwarya Gyan for them Krishna is Nandala son of Nanda Maharaj Yashoda Nanda Gopika Radhanath only very sweet and vulnerable Coward boy of Brazil. So how can we attain that? Maharaj was explaining the development of faith and how it grows gradually up to Bhav. So after this brief introduction, I'll try to express something about Radha Tantra and Prema Tantra because the two are non different. She's Prem Swarupa. Swarupa. Prem Swarupa. So, Radha Krishna Aichi Sada Ekahi Swarup Lila Rasa Ashwadite Dare Dwe Rup Radha Krishna are one. One Atma. But they have two bodies for the sake of relishing Lila Rasa. Krishna is the embodiment of Satchidananda. And his Ananda portion is manifest as Ladini, Ladini Shakti. So Ladini Rasara Prem, Prem Asara Bhav, Bhava Paramakasta Nama Mahabhav, Mahabhava Swarupa Sri Radha Thakurani Sarva Guna Kani Krishna Kanta Shri Ramani. The essence of Krishna's pleasure potency, that which gives happiness to him, which manifests in the devotee as the three types of abhilas. I want to attain Krishna. I want to serve him in a favorable way and have so hard abhilas, very intimate, close friendship with him. And this is the action of Ladini. So, this Ladini Shakti that gives pleasure to him, its essence is brain. And that brain, as Maharaj was explaining, condenses, becomes Naya, Man, Pranaya, Rak, and goes up to Mahabhav. And this Mahabhav also has stages. And the embodiment of the highest Mahabhav, that is Shivati Radhika. So what does this mean? Rupa Goswami is very, very careful, precise, exact, and he builds up his thesis, layer by layer by layer. If you don't catch exactly what he's saying, Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu, you won't understand Ujjala Nilamani. And there, that is where the glories of Radhika, because the stages of praying up to Mahabhav have been in Madhuri Rasa described there in Ujjala Nilamani. So let's just begin a little with some basic bhakti tattva from bhakti rasamrita Singh. If you catch it, then you at least have some shape or theoretical understanding what Rupa Goswami is saying in regard to Radhika being Mahabhasura. First of all, what is this bhav, ecstatic love? Shuddha sattva visheshatva prema suryamsu samyabhak you have a body, gross body, and subtle body. The deepest element of your subtle body is chitta. And the consciousness of the soul, the jnana vritti of the soul, is reflected into that chitta. And we identify with what's going on, in whatever vrittis, whatever movements are going on. The chitta is interwoven with threads of prana. And it's the movement of this pran which comprises our jitta vrittis. Okay? Just a little sort of basic sankhya there. But it's necessary to understand bhakti. 
So he's saying, Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma. Here Shuddha Sattva means Samvit Shakti, Krishna's consciousness potency. And Visheshatma means Ladini Sabriti, the essence of the function of Ladini, the pleasure potency. These two together come into the heart and cause the heart to melt, like we were telling the other day. When you rub the Gandak and Parad, mercury and sulfur together, then it, they become one. So, this bath becomes one with your chitta vrittis. Hmm? In other words, bhakti is a aprakrita pran, a supernatural pran. Your own pran is moving here, and this pran comes and becomes one with it and takes over your mind. Hmm? This is how. So, Rupa Goswami is saying that because this bhav is eternally perfect, it's there in the hearts of the eternal associates. It's not something new. When your bhav appears, it's not something new. It's their energy, their bhav. And it descends like an avatar. Just as the Supreme Lord Ramachandra descends to this world, so in the same way, it is the leela of Bhakti Shakti to descend in this world. And this is what Rupa Goswami Pai says next. All the devotees, I think, are familiar with the verse, Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma, but he goes on to explain exactly what it means. So in the next verses, Rupa Goswami Pad, he said, Avir Bhuya Mano Brito Brajanti Tat Swarupatam Swayam Prakasha Rupa Bhi Vashamana Prakasyavat. Avir Bhuya means it appears like an Avir Bhav, an avatar. Bhakti itself, Bhakti Shakti is descending. Samvita and Latini. And where is it descending? Mano Brito. Mano Brito means the Chitta Brito. The movements of your pran are going on, and this comes, and Brajanti Tatsurupatam becomes one with them. Now, when it becomes, just as your Chitta Brito is moving, and that is revealing to you your own internal and external perceptions, right? Your, your Chitta Brito is moved and produce the pictures of the outer world so you can perceive things. Your chitta vrittis move and give you the feelings of happiness and distress. So your internal and external states are all coming from the chitta vrittis. But now this Samhita and Ladini has come and become one with your chitta vritti. At the stage of Asakit? No, no. This, we, this is the explanation of Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma. But from, from little bit in Nishta then, Ruchyana Sakti, that is the Abbas. And, and then when Baal actually comes, then the chitta becomes one with this, in that stage. Before that, it's only a pass. It hasn't become like the Paradam Gandak. They haven't fixed yet. Right? So, now it's taken over your chitta vrittis. So, Swayam Prakasha Rupapi, even though Baal is self-manifest, it appears to be the um, Bashamana means illumination by your own mind. It appears like that. Pasamana is a very technical term for those who study yoga sutras. You see, when you look at something, then your chitta vritti transforms and becomes that object. Now that object is shining in your chitta and your soul is seeing it. So that's called basamana. So it appears that your mind has revealed this thing to you. But your mind didn't reveal it because Shuddha Sattva Visheshatva descended, took over your Chitta Vritti, and the Bhav is revealing itself. That's the meaning of Swayam Prakash. Oh, oh. Got it? Yeah. Nice? Very, 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 very. <laughs> so just catch, catch this. Because if you don't catch this, then 50 chapters later, when you get towards the end of your journey, you'll you not understand Swasam Vritti You okay. have to get here, yeah. okay. and then you'll get it there. Okay? okay? So, just a few side notes for Maharaj, because Maharaj is very advanced in his studies. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, really. so, so, that is called Swayam Prakash, the, swayam, the self manifesting nature of Bhav. Now, the next verse Vastuta Swayam Aswada Surupaiva Ratistwaso Krishna Dikama Kaswada Okay? Now Rupa Goswami is saying that Bhav is not only Swayam Prakash, self-revealing, but it's also Swayam Aswadya, self-tasting, self-relishing. What does that mean? Vastuta means actual fact. Swayam Aswada, 
Swarupa Ivara Tisyato, its nature is that it bhavi self relishing. In other words, it is not exactly that you are relishing Krishna. You relish the bhav. It's the bhav that is relishable. And this is why, you see, Kamsa Maharaj also sees Krishna. So why is not relishing his sweetness? Because he doesn't have any bhav. The coward boys are relishing Krishna's sweetness. But not to the same degree as the gopis. The, among the gopis, Chandravi is relishing more than others. But not to the same degree as Radharani. So Bhav is self-relishable. Because the Samvit manifests to you Krishna, Nam, Rup, Guna and Lila. And becomes the Hetu. Hetu Plam Patipadate. Becomes the cause of relishing. And then Ladini which is the desire to be with Krishna, to serve Krishna, have the friendship with Him, that's the ruchi, that's the enjoyment. And so, Bhav itself is both the subject and the object and the cause and the effect. It's self-contained. And this is why, in Chaitanya Tarmita, Krishna's Karvaj Goswami part is saying, or rather, he's quoting Krishna, Krishna is saying, a prema dwari nitya radhika e kale amara madhurya mrita arshwade sakale Only Radharani through her brain relishes my sweetness fully. Hmm? Yeah. Understand? Ridoy prem dapana. Yes, yes, yes. So, Sanvit is revealing Krishna Krishna di kama kaswada it is, it is revealing Krishna's Samvit is the conscious potency. It is coming in your vritti and revealing the Krishna, the Vibhav. You see? Bhav, Vibhav, Anubhav, Sattvika Bhav, Vyamachari Bhav. Okay. Mixed together they become Rasa. Uh-huh. So Vibhav is Krishna. Yeah. But this Vibhav is part of... It's, it's generated from the Staya Bhav. Okay. Right? Okay. And this is why it is said that the Bhav is self-relishing. And like an ordinary person only talking about the Udipanas and the Vibhavs and everything, they'll not relish Ras. Why? Because they don't have Rati the Stahibhav. Because the actual experience of the Vibhavs are, it's Swayam Prakash and Swayam Is I'm trying to make it. Is yeah. something coming? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so. If you don't how, understand, it's my fault. So, how they I'm, I'm trying to convey these very deep ideas of Rupa Goswami. Mm-hmm. How can they understand like that? <laughs> so Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhurya, they all have their unique bars, and because of that, they're able to relish in particular. Ah, yes. Because exactly. they have their own experience of Vibhav, Sakya has a different experience. Yes, of yes, yes. And each Rati will turn into that Rasa. Yeah. So, like for example, some persons were trying to make this idea that Subhal Sakya and other Sakyas, they're in Madhurya Rasa, so because they participate in the Madhurya Lila of Radha Krishna to a certain extent. Mm. But it's impossible because from the Sakya Rati, the style of Sakya to become Sakya Rasa. Right. Vatsalya Rati right. turns into Vatsalya Rasa. Madhu Rati turns into Madhu Rasa. Right. It's like that's the basic Rasa Vicha, Rasa Tantra. Okay. So what we're saying here is that Rasa, sorry, Bhav is Swayam Prakash, self revealing in the Jitta Vrittis of the individual devotee and self relishing. Why? Because his strong desire to serve that form of Krishna which he's being self-revealed to him. You see? Mm-hmm. So it's called Swam Prakash and Swam Aswatya. Okay. Now. You understand? Swami. Swami. <laughs> if only Maharaj understands, then my life is successful. Because when I go, he'll still be here and he can explain it again to you. <laughs> so, now, Bhav. When Bhav Bhav is just like a ray of the sun of brain. So that indicates that Bhav and brain, they are very similar. But, but the brain is a, in, in condensed form. It's, it's just more condensed. So what is brain? Brain means, Samyan Masrinita Swanto Mamata Tishyankita Bhava Sa Eva Sandatta Sa Prema Parikirtita No, sorry. Udai Prema Nigatate. So, it is said, Samyan Masrinita Aswanta, the Antakaran is completely melted now. Why? In the stage of Bhav, it was melted, but only melted a little bit. 
right? Yeah. Ruchi bis chitta masrunya. It was, the, it was melted a little. But now in praying, some young masrun ta aslanto, the antakaran is some completely melted. Mamata hmm? atishyangita, and what appears? Extreme mamata, possessiveness. Krishna, you are mine. Radha Ramana Tako Hamaru Oh Radha Ramana you are mine. This feeling of mindness to Krishna becomes very intense. So Bhava Sa Eva Sandratma means it's Bhav in a Sandratma form, in a more condensed form. But I pray that that is called pray. And as Maharaj was mentioning before, Sarvata Dong Saratam, Satapi Dong Sakane, Tadbhava Bandana Yuna Saprema Parikirtita. Love is such. It's like a bondage of emotion that can never be broken. It can't be broken by anything. Hmm? Just like Subhadra. Subhadra is Krishna's sister. Subhadra knows that Krishna is God. But Subhadra has a son named Abhimanyu. He got killed in the battle of Kurukshetra. After the battle of Kurukshetra, Subhadra met with Krishna and she was full of love and affection for him. Though she knew he was God, and though she knows he's the supreme controller, and though she knows he could have stopped Abhimanyu from being killed, but her love was never affected. Sarvata got all the causes for destroying the lover there, but the love cannot be broken. Hmm? Another example. You know, Chandravali loves Krishna so much, and she always tries to meet with him, and sometimes it happens, but most of the time, he kind of, you know, she gets jilted and Krishna ends up with Radharani. But still, she always plays, though she always plays the second fiddle, Right? We have a cello, viola play here, right? So you can't always play the solo in the concert. So though she always, the Chandravi plays the second fiddle, that's it. She has the secondary role. And Krishna is mainly going to Radhika, hardly seeing her. But despite this fact, her love is never broken or diminished. This is love, it's unbreakable. Hmm? Because it's causeless. Hoi to ki. Completely causeless. So this is praying. But when the heart becomes melted to a greater degree, even more melted, then, and chid deeper, deeper now, the heart becomes illuminated like a chid deep. What you see is if you look at the definitions of all the levels of praying, you'll see Rupa Goswami using poetry, but this poetry corresponds to the actions of Samvita and Ladini all the way up, all the way through the stage. So when he said Sneha is Chit Deepa Deepana, the heart is like a, a, a transcendental deep which fully illuminates the sweetness, more fully illuminates the sweetness of Krishna. What is he describing in poetry there? The Swayam Prakash nature of Sambit. Okay. Right? And when he says the heart has become even more melted, melted with what? Latin. The, yeah, the Abilasis. Like this. So if you look very carefully at the definitions of each stage, he's using poetry, but he's tracing the gradual evolutions of the two vrittis, Samvit and Ladini. The Swain Prakash and Swain So that should deep deepen them, then that is self manifesting. That's the Swain Prakash nature of Samvit. Swain Prakash. Though it appears that Krishna is externally there, but actually self manifesting. Krishna, remember, even in this world, when we look at something, we're actually looking at the vritti model of that thing in our own jitta. Right. So it's the same in the spiritual world even. Mm -hmm. That though their bodies are not made of elements like us, they are made of the spiritual analogs of those elements. So there's a spiritual aspect, a spiritual chitta aspect? Spiritual chitta, spiritual prana, and I'll come to that. It's very fascinating. We'll come to it when we do this as prakashita. Right? Prakashita. Okay. So, now, Sneha, now, let's say Krishna is there and he looks beautiful, but when praying turns into Sneha, he looks more beautiful. Did he become more beautiful? Your vision of him became more beautiful. Because it said in Chaitanya Dharani, Krishna said, my sweetness is maximum, and he has no room for expansion. Right? But Radharani is seeing me more and more beautiful every moment. Why? So I am Prakash. Aspect of something. Wow. Which is the hey to the cause, and Bhav is the cause and also the effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh, now, 
So now Krishna is more beautiful. So let's take for example Sneha. Sneha. When Sneha comes, then just seeing Krishna, or if it's more intense, only hearing about him, or if it's more intense, only remembering for a moment. The heart melts even more and the tears are flowing from the eyes. Once Radharani looked at Krishna and her eyes were just gushing with tears. And Brinda Devi said, Oh Radhika, your eyes are like Chakura birds, hmm? drinking the Amrita, the nectar of the moon. And on the pretext of tears, they are vomiting. Uh, and very interesting analogy. It's very beautiful. Good thing you speak in Do you understand what it means? If someone's really, really, really greedy, then what do they do? They eat and eat and eat, and then when they've eaten, then they, they throw up so they can eat again. Oh my God. Right? Now a Chakura bird is already greedy to drink the nectar of the Chandrakas, the moonbeams. Right? So the Chakura bird is so thirsty, they never take anything. They live. The only thing that makes them survive is now and then a, a Chandrika, a moonbeam comes, and the Chikora bird, oh, and he catches it. Hmm? He has a Shakti that he can swallow it without being burned. And that keeps him alive. But Radha's eyes are so greedy. Yambuna jivana keliparayana manasa chanda chakora. Krishna is like the moon, and the eyes of Radhika are like a Chikora, which is more greedy than ordinary Chikora. Because this Chakura is so greedy, this drinking the nectar to be full and then vomiting to drink to drink some more. No, even greedy, more greedy than that Chakura. This is a Chakura who is simultaneously drinking and vomiting at the same time. <laughs> huh? well, because how's the vomiting? Huh? How's the vomiting? That is the. No, oh. <laughs> you understand? Her eyes are greedy, drinking the nectar. And on the on the pretext of tears, the Chakura eyes are vomiting. So that, that's the tears, that's the tears coming from the eyes, like this. So how we, that's called chill deeper, deeper. Right? Hmm? So it's very intense. But this layer is not. This is nowhere near Mahabharata. It's very far away. Another thing, Masunita Swanto. That means heart is melted. What does it mean? The heart is melted. You see, there's a concrete floor here. If you drop something on it, it will bounce off. Yeah? Even if you get something really heavy and drop, it will just bounce off. It will not affect it. But if there's some mud, something a bit soft or concrete, soft, and you drop something, it will make an effect. But if there's water and you drop it, then there'll be so many waves and ripples. Right? It will make a big splash and there'll be waves and ripples. So the idea that the heart melted is to imply that as soon as the heart is touched by vibhav, something which is stimulating, like Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastime, the moment it's touched, then there's a whip, ripples and waves come, like, and they are called sanctuary bhavs. Sanctuary bhavs are the waves in the ocean of the sky bhav, the foundational emotion. So, that, so the softer the heart is, the, the greater the response to the vibhavs, mm. those things which stimulate. The higher the waves. Yeah, yeah. So, higher the waves, and also, if there's a, just a touch of a vibhav, like Uddipana, like a bumblebee landing on a flower, radical think, oh, this flower is like a gopi, and this black bumblebee is like Krishna kissing her. You see? So, what, and everywhere she looks, it will remind her of beautiful pastimes. And being touched by that immediately makes her, what? Sorry, yes, I Sport, sporty will come. Come again? As soon as being touched by any vibhav, yeah. because the heart is stuff, it will produce sportis. Oh, okay. Many sportis. So Rupa Goswami Pa is giving a vision. A vision, a vision, of a vision within the heart. Because the chitta vritti transforms and then becomes, and it's an internal experience. Mm. It may make an external experience even. There's antra sporty and bhavi sporty. Mm. So, for example, when Radharani was a little girl, she was maturing. And she saw Krishna sometimes from the distance and she'd fallen in love with him, but she hadn't met him yet. So one day, one Sati, she was mm -hmm. talking about a deer called Krishna Sar. There's a type of deer called Krishna Sar. 
And when she heard the word Krishna, then her intelligence was completely destroyed, collapsed. In the distance, Krishna was playing his flute. And Vishaka had done, made a painting of Krishna, and Vishaka showed the painting to Radharani. Then Radharani started to cry. She said, she said, Oh, Saki, it would be better for me to die. That would be more auspicious, that I should die right now. Why? Because, I heard just one syllable of Krishna's name. Not none, only Kra, Krishna. And that one syllable, Mati Lumpati, destroyed my intelligence. I have no discrimination anymore. I cannot even think or calculate anything. Sandur Mada Pram Pram. And then I heard the sound of a flute. The implication here is that when Radhika heard the syllable Krish, she had a spurty of Krishna in her heart. And it destroyed her intelligence. And she fell in love with him completely. Lumpati is in the present tense. So it means that that sporty of Krishna is still there in her heart. Then she heard the sound of someone playing a flute. She said, whatever was left over of my mind, after the intelligence was destroyed, then the rest of my subtle body, Sandhurun Mahada Paramparam, became insane. That means that hearing the sound of a flute, she had another sporty of Krishna. But because the Udipana, the name and the flute, were of a different nature, the two sporties of Krishna were different. Because Krishna is, is relished in different ways, at different times, by different Udipanas. So because one sporty came, and then another sporty came, and it was new and fresh, she could not recognize that this person was that person. So then she said, She looked at the painting by Vishaka Saki, and seeing that beautiful boy in the painting, he's in a dark complexion. So first it was sound, was one vibhav of his name. Then it was sound of his flute. Then it was his roof. And that caused a sporty in her heart. And she said, now I've become attached to this boy. If a woman who is married becomes attached to another man, this is very, very inauspicious. But I am so wretched that I have become attached to three men. <laughs> because she's having three sporties of Krishna and because of her deep love she's well she each one in a different way her intelligence which has been destroyed can no longer identify that it's the same person huh? so she said oh Saki I should die because I fall in love with three men other than my husband <laughs> <laughs> alas alas and she's crying then I said oh don't don't panic Saki don't panic we'll help you it's the same person oh really <laughs> <laughs> this is called brain glass. The, not only do Radha Krishna have a Leela, but that Leela is actually the Anubhav, the outer manifestation of the Leela of love, which is going on inside brain glass. See? So, when we speak about the heart melting, it means it becomes so soft, so sensitive, that as soon as it's touched by any vibhav, Udipan, then, the waves appear, sporties and so many sanctuary bars, waves of transitory assisting emotions. So, bhav, prem, sneha, man, man. Man means when sneha comes to a level of intensity and excellence, that it takes on a crooked nature. That crooked nature means there's adakshina, some insubmissiveness. And though one has love, but he hides that. And the Avahita Bhav comes, and the love becomes crooked. It's a bit different, because there are two types of Sneha, Madhu Sneha and Grita Sneha. So when Madhu Sneha of Radharani, it becomes the Lalit Man. 
But the, Madhus, the greatest name of Chandravali becomes Udatama, two different types. So both become crooked, but in different ways. Radharani becomes crooked, that she really loves Krishna, she's happy, but outwardly she becomes contrary. And Chandravali's crookedness comes in the form of inwardly she becomes contrary with him, and outwardly she hides it. Hmm? For example, Krishna can be talking to Chandravali, but because he has Radharani's mind, he'll say, Oh, Radha. And then when Chandravali hears this, she goes into some mud. But it's because it's crooked. When Krishna was first speaking to her, Chandravali had a gentle smile. But when he called her Radha by mistake, then her gentle smile became a big smile. <laughs> she becomes more soft, more submissive outwardly, though inwardly she's kind of, yeah, he can embrace me. So then Krishna embraces Chandravali, but she's not kind of, you know, Recently. responding to that. And Krishna says, oh, this is Adbu, this is amazing. I just embraced you, and I didn't feel any joy at all. <laughs> <laughs> what could be wrong? And Chandra is, oh, my beloved, and speaking very softly and everything. Because she's, she's actually older than Radharani. So she's called a deer, a deer. Mm. she's a uh, Naika, who's more mature. And therefore, she's more uh, self-controlled. She has, she has dira, and so because she's dira, if Krishna does something wrong, she doesn't flip out. She just kind of tortures him psychologically, <laughs> <laughs> while acting really soft and nice on the other. I think it's called passive aggressive. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So yes. The is like that. See? So that's what it means when the snaya, the snaya becomes crooked. But how it becomes crooked is different depending whether madhu snaya or whether the greater snaya became. Crooked. Understand? So like Radharani, example of Radharani's man, I'm giving from Alan Parker's tube, very beautiful. So one day, Radhika was lovingly meeting with Krishna. And they sat down together. And they looked at each other's faces. And Radhika looked at the beautiful kapal, the beautiful cheeks of Krishna. And there, right there on Krishna's cheek, she saw some other gopis lipstick. When Radharani saw that lipstick on the cheek of Krishna, at once she had bhav utpati. You know when the sanctuary bhavs come, when they rise up, it's called bhav utpati. Sometimes two or more come and they mix together, then it's called bhav sandhi. Like two waves, and then two waves sometimes in the ocean and they join together. Okay. You've seen on the beach, right? But sometimes the moods are contrary to each other, that's called bhav sabalya. One emotion is coming this way and one emotion is coming this way and crashing to each other. Right? And sometimes emotions go down. So the sanctuary bhavs, they have bhavat pati, bhavasandhi, bhavshabalya, and bhavshanti. So what's going on here? Radharani saw the lipstick on Krishna's cheek, and bhavat pati came, sanctuary bhav, amarsha, indignation. <gasps> what is this? She immediately became indignant. Some man appeared. What is this? But then Krishna moved, and when he moved, then that lipstick started to move on his cheek. And then she realized, in his earring there's a red ruby, and the light was shining through the ruby and making a red mark on his cheek. There was no lipstick there. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now she gets bath Sunday. Two moods come up at the same time. One of the moods is Vitarka. Vitarka means calculating. <laughs> calculating. Calculating the mind. Is it like this or is it like that? Is it like this or is it like that? And the other mood is Shanka, means anxiety. So Vitarka and anxiety, the two mix together because they're friends with each other in this case. She's in anxiety. Did he notice that I just became angry? <laughs> <laughs> or not? Because if he did, I'm in real anxiety over that. So maybe he noticed, or maybe he didn't notice, or maybe he did, or maybe he didn't. Vitarka is going on, and the two moves are mixed together, because she's thinking, oh my God, if he thinks that I became 
who uptight over this red light card. He used to think I'm so impetuous and highly strong that I'm crazy. And all women, they have that fear. <laughs> oh, all women have that fear. That what if my beloved will think I'm crazy? <laughs> Maybe that all. <laughs> no, no, I have, I have a friend who's a doctor. <laughs> he, told, he told me that clinical studies have been made. And the clinical studies show that two out of every five women are as crazy as the other three. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> oh, and the doctor, that was Dr. T in Australia, no? Oh, so, Dr. He, T. He's probably oh, watching. Dr. T. He's probably watching. Uh, so, no. It's a, good, it's a good thing we're in-house here. Woo! <laughs> well, a lot of people watch. <laughs> so, the, no, the thing is here that the spiritual female psychology is very soft. And many, many waves come. Yeah. You know, so this feeling. So first she had a Marsha. Oh, what's this lipstick? So she was very indignant. But then when she saw it was moving, and she looked closely and realized it was just the light from the ruby in his earring. Then Vitarka. Did he notice or did he not notice? Did he notice? Did he not notice? And Shanka, anxiety, and they mixed together. But then there came Bhav Shabalya. Another three century Bhavs came. And they were in competition with each other. First there was Vrida. Vrida means shyness. Oh. He probably, maybe he did see. <laughs> maybe he noticed that I was becoming upset. So she became shy. And then also came Mati. Mati means thoughtfulness. So now she became very shy, but she also became thoughtful. How can I kind of cover up for my mistake? Right? Understand? You all understand. Oh yeah? That's why some of you are crying. So, then she said, how can I cover up my mistake? So then Avanita Bhav came. Avanita means the concealment of emotions. So then she thought, well, let me just do man. I'll pretend to be man anyway, but I'll just act like I'm upset over something else. And then he won't know that I was freaking out over the light from his earring. Right? I mean, so this is cool, man. When? <laughs> Prem. <laughs> Bob, Prem, Sneha, and when the Sneha starts to become really crooked, right? Then it's called? Man. Then? Pranay. Am I running out of time? I'm trying to get to the Bob. So is that the lead man? Um, Cotillia, yeah. Cotillia Lilipman, but different example, amazing. Wow. So, <laughs> just taste it for a minute. No need to rush, get indigestion. <laughs> mm. So, Man then pranay. Pranay means when man becomes infused with a vishramba, confidence, a special intimacy that the lover and beloved feel as if my body and your body are one. My pran and your pran is one. My soul and your soul is one. My senses and your senses are one. There's no barrier at all. They feel the oneness with each other. So that is called pranay. So for example, one time Radha, Radhika is leaning on Krishna and in the ecstasy of her love her tears are flowing. So then she reaches up and takes his pitambar, takes his pitambar and starts wiping her face with his cloth like that. So it's uh, not respectful according to the standard of Vedic behavior. But because of pranay, she doesn't feel any hesitation to wipe her eyes. There's kajul, black kajul on there, which is running down her face. She doesn't feel any hesitation to wipe it away with his cloth. So this is an example of pranay. There are many examples, but we, 
I just want to give a little glimpse today so we can approach the Mahabhav, the identity of Radhika. Pranaya, then Rag. Rag means uh, Dukam apyadikam chitte sukatvena eva rajate. It is a stage of love where a situation which is very painful and very difficult turns into joy, happiness. And literally it said here, Rajate. Raj means dying. Just like if you get a cloth, let's you have, say you have a white cloth, and you dip the white cloth into a dye solution. And now the dye now pervades that cloth. So what happens is a gopi is suffering. Alas, alas, my mother-in-law, my husband, my sister-in-law, they won't, they're trying to stop me. They won't allow me to go to meet with Krishna. And if I go to meet with him, they may chastise me. Everyone will criticize me. My name will be mud and my reputation will be spoiled in the whole society. And as the brain turns into rag, then that bar of suffering becomes dyed with joy. Ah, oh, my name will be mud. Everyone will criticize me. <laughs> All society will look down on me. And what would be a cause now becomes a, a cause of joy if I can just have a chance to meet with Krishna. Hmm? So, there's a called rag, and there are different types of rag. Rupa Goswami has very given elaborate uh, metaphors, poetic metaphors, to describe all these different types. So, because rag is like a dye, where happiness becomes literally died, died with joy and transformed. For example, Radhika. You mean distress becomes died with joy? Yeah, the distress becomes died with soup. The duke becomes died and turned into soup. Sorry, excuse me. So once it was very hot, it was the middle of the summer, it was midday, the hot sun was raining down on, the, on Govardhan Hill. And the top of Govardhan Hill had very sharp sunstones. But Radhika heard the sound of a flute and knew that Krishna is just the other side of the hill in the valley. So with bare feet she ran up to the top. And though the stones themselves were blazing hot and very sharp and her feet are very soft, she's standing on the sharp hot stones in the hot sun and looking down at Krishna in the distance. And she feels that the sharp stones are as soft as cool as lotus petals. She feels completely cool. Because that which would be a cause of suffering has become dyed with joy because it affords one an opportunity to have some connection with Sri Krishna. So this is called Rag. Now, there are different types of dye have different types of effect. So Rupa Goswami compares the different types of Rag to different types of dye. For example, the main two types of Rag which comes from Chandravali's Gritasneya, it develops into Nilima Rag, that is a bluish dye. And Radhika's Rag develops into Raktima Rag, reddish dye. So, rather, Gritasneya becomes Nilima and Madhusneya becomes Raktima. So, there are two types of blue dye and two types of red dye also. And these are actual flowers, they're herbs which are used in dyeing. Like Nili is indigo and Shama and Biru and they have different effects. Like Nili, this indigo, when you put it on a cloth, if there's already other colors there, it covers all the other colors. So in the same way, Sita has Nili Rag. Because when she mm, has to go to the forest with Lord Ram, or even when she's kidnapped or anything. Or even Lord Ram will send her away. But she'll, all her other emotions will be hidden by her Nili Rag mm. eh, for Lord Ram. So Chandravali is also like that. Sita's moods go up to what stage? Up to... It doesn't go to Anurag. Sorry, it doesn't go to, um, to Mahabhav. But it's not exactly described, but it definitely goes up to Nilirad because that's what she has. Mm. 
whether it becomes anurag or not, yeah. I'll have to go and do okay, some research, sorry, you know? Sorry. No, no, bro. When I don't know something, I tell you. <laughs> if I tell you something, you can know that it's in just. You can put your money on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> but That's I why know. I like it. <laughs> So that's interesting because we know it goes up to Nilirag. Yeah. Will it go to Anurag? I have not seen any examples because we'll come to Anurag now. The symptoms are there. In the Ramli, I didn't see those examples. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come to it. So if I have to guess, that's what I would guess up to Nilirag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the Rakti Marag is two types, Kusumba. And Majista. Yeah. Now, these four types, you have Nili, Sharma, Kosumba, and Majista, corresponds to the four groups of gopis. Because Radharani's group mm, have full Madhusneha. Chandravani's group have Madhusneha but with a little greater Sneha. Then the Tatasta group, the middle group, they have m- mainly the greater Sneha with a little Madhu, and Chandravani's group have full greater Sneha, like this. So, because of the mixtures of Brita sure. and Madhu, so then the, the different types of Ra come Nili, Shama, Kusumba, Majista. Starting from the Grita up to the Madhu. Kusumba, Shama, Sati. Yes, yes, yes. Kusumba. So, actually, I was just giving a lecture on this in, in uh, Russia at the time of Rupa Goswami's appearance day. I don't know if you saw that lecture online, but I prepared for this lecture very thoroughly by having glasses of water and all the herbs. Okay. I, wrote, I collected them. Okay. Yeah, I bought them online, yeah. okay. And I put them in the water and I got the white cloth and I demonstrated to everyone how they work. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is that the Kosumbara, it's bright, yeah. but it fades. Yeah. And it doesn't cover the other co- colors. Right. The Manjistara takes very fast. Exactly and it like, never and it never fades. Exactly like Rupa Goswami said. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I tested it. I tested it before the class just to make sure it would work. <laughs> <laughs> and then my wife's one lad, she was on the side, like translating, and she bought all the ingredients for there. So when I got to that point of the class, I said, uh, and now my assistant will. And then she bought, but then I dipped all the things in and then I'll show we have photographs. I'll show you the photographs. Wow. Because I just wanted to find out what Rupa Goswami is talking about. It's, am- it's amazing, actually. Really amazing. So, and the thing is that, that this Kusumbarag, it's bright but it fades. Mm. But if you add a little manjista to it, mm. it fixes it. Uh, huh? yeah. And this is why Shamala's rag, by nature it would fade, but because she's really close friends with Radhika, yeah. it becomes almost like manjista. Right. And so she's like, not in her group, sure. but she's almost there, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Shamala's neutral, right? No, child. Friendly, friend, she, friend, friendly. Friendly. She's friendly. a surit. Neutral friend. So, no, 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 no. Not neutral, not neutral at all. Very attached to Radhika. She has Kusumbarag. She's neutral to Chandravali. Ah. Uh-huh. If you look at it the other way. Yeah, I saw, actually, I thought I bought the dice with me. So, <laughs> then, so then I told you, I looked in my suitcase, they weren't there. So then I called my wife, I said, hey, I thought you packed it. <laughs> the herbs. She said, uh, said, oh, well, I don't know. And then she sent me, because she, she took a photo, she sent me the photographs. Yeah. So if you want, you can show it on the screen, the photographs. Okay. But uh, anyway, next time. Tonight we can talk. <laughs> Tonight is going deeper. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. 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 No, actually, <laughs> tonight, 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 no, no tattoos tonight. Rasa. Only Leela. Uh-huh. Only Leela. Very easily digestible. Yeah. Nothing to chew, just drink. <laughs> Nothing complicated. <laughs> what, Mahaba? Yeah, just, just, just something sweet. Like okay. <laughs> because many people um, and don't, don't get into complicated things. Everyone here right now is hardcore. Because we've been going at this full blast 24 hours a day for three days already. And this is just like the survivors. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is lying flat. <laughs> so with them, they deserve it. I <laughs> think <laughs> 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 I'll give you a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make the t-shirts later, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Kosumba Rag. So this we have discussed Rag, then when Rag becomes more developed, it becomes Anurag. Anurag. Oh, so the Manjista. Oh. The Magista, 
the, yes, the manjista, it takes hold very fast. And this is why in Ramananda Rai's poem that he told Mahaprabhu, Pai Lehi Raga Nayana Banga Bela Anudila Barila Avadina Gela. He said, Radharani is saying, when I first met Krishna, he just glanced at me and I glanced at him. Immediately Raga appeared. What Rag? Manjista Rag. What's the symptom? Anudina Barla Avadina Gela. Immediately, in just one or few days, it just increased, 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 and now it became unlimited. So that is the poetic description of the Manjista Rag. Yeah. So then it says Naso Ramana Narahama Ramani. And it turns into that is the Swasamaja Dasha. In Rudaba. Then it becomes a saki se sabha prema pahini. Now it becomes Adi Bhav. Wait, 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 As long as Maya understands something, he blesses me then. Like, oh my God. So, <laughs> this is epic. This is epic. <laughs> it's one thing if you're just hearing it for the first time. It's another thing if you've been studying it for 40 years. And now you just see, you know, what things that. Oh, that's another experience, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. So that was the answer, the nature of Manchester. Now, now we're going, I'm sorry, I'm going quickly. Takes, you, you can see the lectures from the Astrahan Festival. On the Caspian Sea in the Volga Delta, we made a seven day festival just recently during Jul and Yatra, Balde, Puni, and Rupa Goswami disciplines. It's more details spread out over days with the slides and diagrams and everything. They're amazing so far. Uh, so, just so one little bit. Chaitanya Academy uh, YouTube channel. Chaitanya Academy YouTube. So now we're coming to Anurag. What is this Anurag? Sadhana Bhuta Api Yaha Kuryam Navam Navam Priyam. Again, Rupa Goswami is saying that love which is realized newer and newer every moment, and which makes the beloved experience this newer and newer at every moment is called anurag. Okay? So, what does it mean that the love is experienced nur and every moment? Which vritti is it? Vibhat. Which vritti is oh, it? Ladini. Yeah. No. And then, Ladini. Mm, Ladini. But, but the cause is the Sambit. Krishna is experienced nur and every moment and the love is experienced nur and every moment. So it's Sambit and Ladini. Mm. Working like this. Krishna is experienced mm. the, the love Ladini. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's Swam Prakash and Swam Aswadhyaya. It's all going on inside the abode, the ashraya of Rasa. That's just why going, just yeah. going deeper and deeper. That's why Krishna is saying, I experienced the brain, which is the, uh, the, the right of the Vishal, uh -huh. but not of the ashraya. Uh -huh. Because the ashraya has the subject, object, the cause, and the effect self relishable and self revealing. It's uh -huh. not accessible to him. So, even in the position of the um, Ashoy, Vishoy, what he's experiencing, Rag and Rag, is different from how Shri Mataraja yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Though there's a w same level, but different. Yeah, because yeah. there's reciprocation, yeah. up to a point. Yeah. And then there's a the point where Radharani keeps going and Krishna fails. But even at the point where he's going, he's still not experiencing what she's experiencing. No, 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 no. no. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So, Anurag, we just discussed the definition. So, Dharabhutuya. Api Yaha Kuravam Navanavam Priyam. Now, it has four Anubhavs. It causes Paraspara Vasibhav Atishaya. That means that the lover and beloved, they, there is a great increase in rasa because they feel that they're under the control of each other. You're under the control of my love and I am under the control of your love. That's called Paraspara Vasibhav Atishaya. Now, why is it significant? It's significant because, you know, Lord Narayan said to the Vasamuni, Aham Bhakta Pradi no, Yasvatantri Vajaja. I am not independent, I'm controlled by my devotee. 
So in other rasas, the, con- the mutual control of each other is in prem. Hmm? The mutual control is in the stage of prem. But in Madhur rasa, actually, though Krishna is controlled, because the Madhuri Ras has man, contrariness, vanya bhav, avahita, concealment of emotions and everything. So, she's, even though brain is there, she's not under control. She's out of control. Krishna's controlled by her, but she's not controlled by him. You see? But when it gets up to Anurag, the possibility comes of Paraspara Vasibhava Atishai. Now Radhani submits to him. And now there's a big increase in Ras because they're mutually under each other's control. Paraspara means mutually. So example is once Radharani was wandering in the forest. She couldn't find Krishna. Krishna was wandering in the forest. She could, he couldn't find Radha. And by chance, they suddenly met. And when they met, they just embraced. Prasper of Tishai. The Anurag just made them embrace each other and they're both under the control of the love of each other. So that's a special feature of Anurag. Because what usually happens when Radha and Krishna meet in the, in the forest, Sringaryani Bhavitim Madhisaryani Vikshayva Kanta Paranam Parivrityantim Dhritanchalena Harisani Maanyani Samprapyata Arjuna Sudam Rishita Bhavani Sankapu Kapudruma Sila Vishnu Chakitakura said, When will I decorate Radhika with beautiful ornaments head to toe? And when will I lead her through the forest at night to meet with Krishna? And when she arrives there, and as soon as she sees the face of Krishna, and Krishna looks at her, she turns around and runs away. <laughs> And as she's going, I'm fast, and I catch her by the ancho, by her veil, and I'm dragging her towards Krishna, and she's trying to get away, and I'm pulling her towards Krishna. And Krishna's watching the whole drama. Isn't that the crookedness of her love, though? Excuse me? Is that not the crookedness of her love? Well, that's what I said. That's what I'm saying. For other rasas, the mutual control comes in praying. But because Madhuya rasa has all these stages of ma, the crookedness, because it has bamyaka, contrariness, it has avahitama, hiding the love. It has all, so the mutual control doesn't come up into the stage of anurag. And therefore, one of the anubhavs of anurag is prasra basibhava atishai. But in the stage of praying, this bhava bandana isn't going both ways. No, that, mean, that means the love can be broken. But that doesn't mean that there's control. Okay. You see? Okay. Means the love control. can be broken. Even okay. when she turns away and runs away, she still loves him. Right? right. Love and control. Okay, I got you. Huh? Well, I, actually, Maharaj, you have, you have inspired another point, which is extraordinary. Okay, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say this, but you have inspired it. I just have to rewind and then they're like, the third chapter, and come back to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. One of the basic things about Maduras, unique of Radha and Krishna, Rupa Goswami part says, Radha Madhava Yo Eva Kwapi Bhava Yatapya So Sajatya Vijati Yaya Naiva Vicha Jate Kachit. The meaning is this that the Rati of Radha and Madha for each other is never ever interrupted by either unfaithful barbs like disgust or fear or so on or um, like other rasas like Sakya and Vatsalya or uh, compatible barbs like the Madhuya rasa of other gopis such as Trangravi and so on so for every other devotee they love Krishna and Krishna loves the devotee but depending on the circumstances sometimes that bhav will be interrupted it will become Africa, it will become unmanifest because, you know, maybe a gopi has to deal with a husband or a mother-in-law or something like that. Some situation is there. And in daily life, in Raja, it will become interrupted. And then later, Ojipan will come, and that will cause the, the viva will make the appearance of the unmanifest bar. It will appear and, be, and then mix with the others and become rasa. So the, the frame and the rasa is coming and going depending on the circumstances. But with Radha and Krishna, one thing is there that Krishna's Rati for Radhika and Radhika's Rati for Krishna is never, ever, ever interrupted by anything. That means that when Krishna's fighting with the demon, when Krishna's meeting with Chandravali, when Krishna's talking to his mother, whatever he's doing, he never forgets Radhika for one more. And the same for Radhika. The example is given that um, Radhika was at Govardhan 
And Krishna just killed Sankachud. The Sankachud was lying dead on the ground and jackals were coming and eating his dead body. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. the At the same time, there were some rishis there offering prayers from the Vedas. Shantaras. Shantaras is completely against Madhuras. Because Shantaras is Mamata Gandahin. No possessiveness at all. You cannot be peaceful in Madhuras. You have to be excited all the time. <laughs> yeah? Sinha, Drag, Passion. You see? So Shanta is extremely against Madhuras. So the disgusting thing was there, the Shantaras was there, and then Balaram came. So Balaram is the elder brother. It inhibits Puladuya Rasa because he has Vatsalya Bhav towards Krishna. But still, though Balaram was like the moon, and the moon closes a lotus flower. Hmm? Though the, the sages were offering prayers which are cold like snow, and snow makes the lotus flower close. Hmm? But the lotus of Radharani's bar for Krishna, it did not wilt hmm. in those circumstances even. So even when extremely unfavorable situations come, but there's never vichyate, any break. So every single devotee has a vichyate at some point. And Krishna's love for them also has vichyate at some point. But only Radha and Krishna have no vichyate ever. How about the mind use for Radha? Any vichyate? No. Never. No. Sorry. pralaya hai. But Srila Bhakti Nautakur says in Sri Krishna Vira Radhika, he said, if for one moment I were to uh, leave the service of Radhika, then for me that would be like the total annihilation of the universe. That's when you are. Where will we? Okay, Anurag, yeah. Sorry, but you made that little diversion. You said, yeah, bound, 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 yeah. Love, love There's a difference between the bondage of love and being controlled. Yeah. In the Lila, yeah? Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, that, so Anurag, it has Prasparo Vasubhava Tishai, it has Vipralamba Vispurti. A very intense purities take place which are indistinguishable from actually meeting with Krishna. Hmm? Then, there is Apranin Apya Janmalalasa, the desire to take birth as uh, an, an inanimate object, hmm? like a piece of bamboo. If I could be a piece of bamboo, then maybe I'd become a flute and Krishna would kiss me. <laughs> if I could become a, a flower in his garland. So this feeling comes in Anurag. And then the last of the four is praying by chitya. Praying by chitya means it's a type of separation in meeting. But there's many types of separation in meeting, so don't mix them all up and make it you. Praying by, <laughs> praying by chitya is a very special type. Yeah. They're all special, but the distinct qualities of praying by chitya is this. That due to the intense anurag, the intense desire to experience the qualities of Krishna which are new and new every moment. It's not possible to take in all of Krishna's qualities at once. It's just not possible. So the intelligence becomes so fine that it can only take in one quality of Krishna at a time. So the example is given. Let's say you have a... Who's ever done some sewing? Yeah? Have you done some sewing? Anyone? Right? It's fun, I remember doing it. So, home economics, when I was like, whatever, 10 years old in school. <laughs> so, you get the needle, and sometimes it's a very fine needle with a small hole. And you get a thread, and, but the thread that you've got is not very fine, it's a little bit thicker. So, and you're trying to thread it. Have you ever been trying to do that? Yeah. You know, like before you had to see Brahman initiation, you just like, look the <laughs> that's right, right? <laughs> but after Brahman initiated, then you realize that's not Brahminical. <laughs> but anyway, people, you know, they make thread to try because all the end is starting to get frayed. So you try to make it into a point and you try to put that through the hole, but it's a little bit too big. Like, but a little bit goes through. Oh, right, a little bit goes through. And then you grab it the other side and you get that little end. But then when you pull it, only that little strand comes up. It's oh a big mess on the other side. Yeah. Right? You've all done that, right? When you're, yeah. when you're mending your socks, right? Yeah. So you pull out, you just pull out a little bit, comes through, and all the others like a big tangled mess on the other side, right? So anurag is like that. 
the, the intelligence becomes so fine, the buddhi becomes so fine, that it's focusing on one quality of Krishna. It might be his fragrance. It might be the sound of his voice. It might be the beauty of his eye. And one becomes totally absorbed in that to such a degree that everything else disappears. And when everything else disappears, then the next moment one thinks, where did Krishna go? And starts to cry. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thakwa said, Ankasti take Radwani sitting in the lap of Krishna. Hmm? But she's relishing his sweetness and she gets lost in one quality so deeply that everything else about him disappears. And she starts to cry, Ha Mohan Eti, Ha Mohan, Ha Mohan. Shama hmm? Anuraga, Madhavivala. She becomes overwhelmed with the madness due to Anuraga. Shama hmm? Mani. Jati kapi nikunja sinni. Oh, when will I be there in that kunja and witness this astonishing prayer of Shamamani? So, it's separation in meeting, but this is how it is taking place. It's not because they're separating meeting also in, in uh, Rudabhav, in Adi Rudabhav, in Modern and Mohan, but they're all different. They're all completely different. Only just to say for a separation in meeting is not sufficient. So, Anurag. Now when Anurag becomes more intense, now we come to the subject, right? Because Radhan is Mahabhav Surupa. It turns into Mahabhav. That is also known as Rudabhav. So, Sila, in the... This Rudabhav has been glorified everywhere in Srimad Bhagavatam. Eita Param. Tanubrito Bhuvi Gopavadvo Govinda Eva Nikalatmani Ruda Bhavaha Vanchanti Yad Bhavai Bhyomani Ovayanda Kim Brahma Janabi Ananta Katara Sasya Would have said, ah, of all the people who have taken birth in this world, only those who are female are successful. But those females are only successful if they're born on earth, not in the heavenly planets. And of those born on earth, they are not successful unless they've been born not in the high caste, Brahmin, or Katriya, but in Gopa caste. And those in the Gopa caste, they are not successful unless they've been married, Gopavadu, to another Gopa, another coward boy. But Govinda, even Nikalatmani, Ruda Baba, leaving their home and all their duties, transgressing all the boundaries of Dharma, they run to meet with Krishna because they have a Ruda Bhav. Hmm? This Bhavi search Vanchanti Yad Bhava Vyomuni O Vayamcha. Persons who are Mamukshu, they, they're afraid of material existence, they want to be liberated. The Sadakas, they aspire, I wish I had this love. Hmm? Muneo and the Munis who are already Siddha and perfected, already liberated, they aspire to have this love. Vayamcha would have said, and we also. I'm a Nitya Parikar. I'm an eternal associate, and I want it, but I don't have it. Kim Brahma Jamma Bi Anantakatara Sasya. What's the use in taking birth in a Brahmin family if Anantakata Arasasya, you don't have taste in this unlimited kata of gopis with the bhav? What's the use? What's the use of Kim Brahma Jamma Bia? Means what's the use of taking the highest birth in the universe of Lord Brahma if you don't have taste in this Harikata? And the meaning here is that if you do have taste in this Harikata, then it's like a seed. And that taste in Gopi, in this harikatara of Praja Gopis will grow and one day it will become Govinda even Iklatani Ruda Bhava to become that Ruda Bhava. Haribo! Haribo! <laughs> so, so, oh, I didn't say that point before. In the next verse, Udab is saying, Kwemastriya, where am I and where are the Gopis? So in the second part, Udab says that hmm, Oh, I have never done any bhajan. I've never done any bhajan. So how come I got the association of the gopis here in Vrindavan? I never did any uh, service in my life really to Krishna. But what happened? That day when Krishna was on the roof of the palace crying in separation in Mathura and Buddha found him. 
Why is Krishna crying? You've never seen Krishna crying. I told you he's Paramananda Swarup. Why is he crying? And then Krishna held the hands of Uddhav and said, Go Uddhav to Braja and console my parents and deliver my message to the gopis. Then he began to glorify the gopis. prana. So that means that Uddhav heard some glories of Braja gopis. And he's saying, Avidusa, even a person who's ignorant, if they take some medicine, especially Amrita, if you're going to die and you find some Amrita, you don't even know it's Amrita, and you drink some, what will happen? You come alive. So medicine works whether you understand it or not. So Uddhav saying, I never understood anything. But because I heard some kata of the glories of Braj Gopis, and therefore, by a great miracle, I have come here and in Braj and having the Sangha of Braj Gopis, the highest Sangha, and, and witnessing with my own eyes. So Gurudev used to say that this Qatar of the glories of Gopi's brain is so powerful that even if you don't understand, if someone is speaking this Qatar and the wind blows, and the wind that touched that Qatar touches you, Agadaraj Yukta, it's an infallible medicine. One day, very soon, you'll be a Gopi in Galoka Vrindavan. That's how powerful this Qatar is. So, we are coming now to Mahabhav. Radhika is Mahabhav's group. The definition of Mahabhav, Maharaj will tell. Can you just tell? Just the <laughs> Paribhasha, just the definition. Anuragas or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anuraga, so some Dasyam Prabhupada, Prakashitaha. That when Anurag attains a state of Swasam Vedya Dasa. Swasam Vedya Dasa means that when that stage of praying Anurag, when it is perceiving itself. Okay? He'll explain. <laughs> it's, re it's when it's revealed externally through Sattvic Bhavs. Papya hmm? Prakashitaha. That when Srimati Radharani is in that state where her anurag is perceiving itself, then externally her body it manifests astasadvik bhavs, tears flowing from the eyes, hairs of the body standing on end. It goes up to, with, in anurag state for Srimati Radharani, it goes up to Udipta. In, in this state, now we come to Rudabha, uh, it's up to Udipta, up to but Udipta. not Sudipta. Sudipta will come later. In so, so, he'll explain. It's revealed externally through Sattvic Bhas. Take When it takes shelter of the highest rock, and it's present, okay. Um, Yabat Ashraya Vritti. So, in that state, when she met Radharani, that she, let me see, what, that the rock, you, what's that diagram? First stage is the Bhav and Radharani. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, here the Parabhasha of Rupa Goswami. Here, Anuraga Susambhedya Dasham Prabhapakajita Yavan Asrai Bhutti Stead Bhava Gitta Vidyate. Rupa Bhav has three characteristics. The first one is Swasam Vedya Dasha. Swasam Vedya Dasha. It means when Swasam Vedya, Swa means itself, Sam Vedya means fully known. Anurag becomes fully known to itself. Okay. Now someone can say, wait a minute, many, many chapters early in Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, in the description of Bhav, the two qualities have been, have been described. Swayam Prakasha Rupa Api Basamana Prakasya and Swayam Vastuta Swayam Aswada. That it's the nature of Bhav that it is self-revealing and self-relished. So then what's this? Anurag is become known to itself. Same thing. 
Could the person be the same? Uh -huh, exactly. So the Shachak Tako and his Ananda Chanakatiga raises this point. Well, what's the if the, if Bob itself is creating the experience of the subject, you, I want to serve, the desire, the needy, mm. and the object, Swamprakash, Swam Krishna. Mm. Right? Mm. So the subject and object, you and what you are seeing, are both the products of within the bar. Right. So it's self experience and self relish. Right. Okay, self manifesting, Swam, Swam Prakash, and Swam Aswata, self relish. Right. And so the subject and object, uh, dichotomy, is set up by Sanvit. Right? Because Sanvit gives awareness right. of Krishna as the object right. and awareness of you as a subject right. of that object. Right. Because Sanvit means knowing, so it's also being aware of yourself. Right. And the Ladini is the, the Ruchi and the Avilas, like that, the tasting, exactly. So because the subject and the object is included in Bhav itself, yeah. now we have a situation where Bhav, in the stage of Anurag, becomes the, its own object. That means that let's say there's a subject and an object here within Bhav, Krishna's form and qualities, yeah. and your ego, your identity of who you are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now Anurag, another layer of Anurag appears. Yeah. And there's your identity. Yeah. And what is Swami Prakash is this one down here. What is being revealed by Sambit is this level. Right. So you have now an identity above your previous ego. It's like a yogi. Let's say a yogi is in uh, Samprakyata Samadhi. Mm -hmm. He attains the state of Shakshitwa. What does that mean? Witnesshood. Okay. And actually, as devotees, we have to be in a state of witnesshood all the time. Pure Bhakti doesn't begin until Shashinto is established. What it means is this, usually the I, the I-ness of the Atma is merged with the I-ness, the Hankar. Hmm? Our sense of I, the Gyan bridge of the soul, extends into the material ego and we think that we're this ego. Right. So what happens is when the Sattva Boon becomes very high, Gyan appears and Gyan is the distinction. Right. So Christine Gita says, Naivakim Kinchit Karomiti. A person with Gyan, when he's standing, sitting, walking, talking, whatever he's doing, he knows that only the senses are engaged with the objects, but he himself is doing nothing. Right. That's called Shakshit, or witnesshood. The ordinary person thinks, I am this mind and ego, and I am the witness of the world. And when Gyan comes, the difference is, now you become objective to your own mind. In other words, I am the soul, and I am watching the movements, my chitabritis. Right. That's called Shakshit. So, though the gopis have their spiritual ego, they have actually all the spiritual analogues of all of these aspects that we have here, because this world is a reflection of that world. So the gopis go into a stage of shakshitra. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, they speak about yogis, the uh, uh, Ruddha, and uh, Yoga Ruddha, and Yoga Rurukshu, the one who's trying to get to the next level, and the one who's already at the next level. It's the same word, Ruddha. So Ruddha Bhav means, you, the word Ruddha is also used with like, if there's a chariot, and you say, you got onto the chariot, now you're Ruddha. You've alighted onto the next level. Mm -hmm. So they have an awareness of themselves made by Sanvit. Mm -hmm. That's Anurag. Mm -hmm. Sanvit and Nadini, subject and object. Mm -hmm. Now, another level of Anurag comes, for which that Anurag is the object. Mm -hmm. So you have an ego down here, subject and object, Radhika and Krishna here. And now you have, now you, put, you come to this level. So now you become like another person, being the Shakshi, the witness of these Chittavritis in that stage. So those Chittavritis in those stages is, is Bhav or Anurag? It's an Anurag becomes the object of itself. So this okay. is Anurag and this is Anurag, but together that's called Rudra Bhav. Okay. When Anurag becomes the object of its own perception. Right. Uh, so it's like, uh, that is why um, Rupa Goswami gives the example tan, from Bhagavatam. Tanavidan Maya no Sangha Badha. Oh, the gopis, they have such deep love for me that they are like, like moonies going into samadhi. So just when a moonie goes into some pragyata samadhi, then he goes above his ego and looks down on that from the possession of the soul. So Buddha means, Buddha Bhav means going up to another level and looking down on that. So now she's seeing her own jitabriti, but what's in her jitabriti? Krishna is there by some bit, her own ide identity and her love, 
And she's seeing that with Anurag also. So the love is making, this love is increasing, and this love is seeing it doubly increasing. And then she can say, Na so Ramana na Amaramani. I am not the lover and the beloved. Because she's looking at her, who she was before and who he is. From, she's entered into that state of Ruddha Bhav, Ruddha, going up. It's not so easy to answer. But if you don't get the definition of Bhav in the beginning of Bhaktara Samhita Sindhu, first quadrant of the ocean, chapter 3, explaining what Bhav is, mm. how it is Swami Prakash and Swami Swadhyaya, then you're not going to get this there. Right. Because the whole construct of cause and effect, subject and object, is established there. And then another level comes on top. So that, that combination of object and subject here mm -hmm. is replicated here. Y yeah, yeah. Is, no, but the sub no, but the subject is there, the subject is there, and the object is this. Because the anubhava yeah. becomes the object yeah, yeah, of that object, yeah. right? Subject, but this subject yeah. object is witnessing this. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. No, so you got subject and object down here, yeah. you got subject here, yeah. but that's that whole thing is the object. Okay. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, so yeah. that's called Rudabha. Okay. So what's adding Rudha? More intense. The word no. The word adi means wh which has an object. Adi means which has an object. So adi rudabha means. So what does ruda mean exactly? Ruda means alighted. 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 Gone up to the next level. Alighted. Risen up to that level. Okay, alighted. I asked a two loud bang question. Give me another definition of ruda. I can't remember. I'll tell you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, alighted. Sorry, perhaps not alighted. You know what I mean? Uh, like, no, a light is not it's been, it's, It means, uh, like, because the light is when you get down, excuse me. When you go up, like, there's a chariot, and you yeah. want to get on it, then you say you've mounted the chariot, yeah. or you've gone up to that level, that's Buddha. You have elevated. Elevated. Yeah, you've elevated to that level. Arisen. Arisen, yeah, to that level. So it's Buddha. Enlightened? Uh, no, because that indicates, like, of course, definitely enlightened. <laughs> but it literally means... If you're on a lower level and you go to the next level, yeah, yeah. then you're Ruddha. Ruddha so okay. that's why you have two types of yogis. Yoga Ruddha, the one who's gone up, yeah. and the Yoga Rukshu means he desires to go up. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Now, so then Adi Ruddha means that which has root, just as in Ruddha Bhav, Anurag becomes, has Anurag as its object, yeah. and now becomes Ruddha Bhav. Yeah. Adi Ruddha means that which has Ruddha Bhav as its object, Adi Ruddha. That which has as an, its object the root above right. is called Adi Ruddha. Okay. So now another level of okay. yeah, is looking yeah. up. So now you've got the personality here uh -huh. is kind of getting distant now. And that's why you start to get eating and separation at the same time. Not wait, in the sequence. Wait, the personality here means Anurag. That's Radhika here. Yeah. But now she's looking at herself from here. Right. And in Adi Ruddha now she's looking at this this ego uh -huh. in the middle, right, right? right? And then this becomes like a Saki. Yeah. So then she's talking to her own Anurag in right. the form of Ramana right. Narayana. Right, right, right. Right? Yeah. So the, the, when it comes to first, it starts with Manjista Rag, then Naso Ramani, Nahama Ramani. Then she starts talking to a Saki, A So, But that Saki is that one, that level there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, that's how all the Sakis come, because Ramana's love is unlimited. And by the levels of her love, all the Sakis are expanded. The manifestations of uh, her love, yeah. 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 So she's Mahabhav Suru, uh -huh. and they are Ananda Chinmaya Sapati Bhavi Tavis Tabiya Eva Nija Rupa Teya Kalavi. They're the color. Expansions and expansions of Radhika. They're the Kaya Vyuru. Okay. So, 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 so you were explaining Swasam Vedya Dasa, mm -hmm. then Yavada Shrai Vrti. Okay. Swasam Vedya Dasha. Swasam Vedya Dasha, we've discussed the first thing. Anurag becomes Ruddha Bhav when Anurag becomes the object of its own experience. Yeah. Because it's, the consciousness is Ruddha to the next level. Yeah. Now the next, when that happens, then the Sattvic Bhavs become very intense. They are in the stage of Udhipta, which means five Sattvic Bhavs, or even six, seven, or even eight, but at least five Sattvic Bhavs, very intense, intensely manifest. Yeah. Now why is that? Why is that? After the definition of Ruddha Bhav, it can all be put in one verse. I mean, it's, it's hinted there, but it has to be um, expounded upon. Rupa Goswami says, Varamrita Surupa Sri Swasurupam Mano Nayat. Yeah, look, it's good. Keep looking. Varamrita Surupa Sri Swasurupam Mano Nayat. You got it? 
No, keep on going. Though. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Really? Yeah. yeah. 157, 158. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Varamrita Surupa, this Buddha Bhav is Varamrita, it's the highest nectar. Surupa, Swasarupa, Manonayet. And the mind becomes of the Swarup, of, of that Mahabhav. The mind becomes the same Swarup of that Mahabhav. What does it mean? Now, remember what we were saying. That your chitta is there and he has pran, and, and the pran is moving. These are the vrittis. Mm -hmm. When bath comes, it comes and becomes one with those vrittis. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't become one with all of the vrittis. Because there are many vrittis going on. Okay. Different perceptions and everything. Okay. But in this stage of Rudha Bhav, mm -hmm. all the vrittis, every single vritti of the consciousness has become completely one with the Samvita Madhini movements of Rudra Bhav. And when that happens, do you, do you know why Sattvic Bhavs take place? Because the Pran starts moving in the mind and then it connects to the senses. Remember we gave the definition of the Akash. Akash is the meeting ground. Pranindriyatna Distyatma Nagaso Lakshana. Akash is the meeting ground of the Pran, the mind and the senses. So because of this, the vritti of Swarup Shakti, which is in the mind, touches the pran. And, and, and sorry, it's already in the pran, and it touches the senses. And then the senses travel around the body. Right? So in the stage of Mahabhav, the intensity is so much, the mind becomes one with Mahabhav, the vritti of Mahabhav goes from the pran into all the senses. The vritti of Mahabhav. Yeah. yeah. Is it in, taken over the pran in the mind yeah. and then overflows into all the senses. Okay. The entire senses of the entire body. Mahabhasarupini, that's why. We're getting there. <laughs> what, what are the bodies of the associates of Krishna made of in the spiritual world? The associates of Krishna. Krishna's associates in Nanda Maharaj, Madhya Show, the coward boys, all of them. Gopis, what are their bodies made of? Yeah, Sandini. Right? Sandini is existence. Yeah. And Bhav is Samvit and Ladini. Uh, so everyone in the spiritual world, their body is made of Sandini. Uh, and it has the analogs of earth, water, fire, ether, ground, everything, like that. Uh, 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 and then there's the vrittis, the movements of bhakti, which is going within them, uh -huh. touching their pran, yeah. and making them have sattvic bhavs. Yeah. Because when, when the pran, which is infused with the Samvit and Ladini, touches the element of earth in the body, then what happens? You become stunned. When it touches the element of fire, you start to sweat and you have a fading of the color. When it touches the element of, of um, water. water, then you cry. You see? When it touches the element of akash, you Stop. faint. You faint. Yeah? When it touches air, if it slightly touches air, your hair stands on end. If it's more intense, you start trembling. And if it's more intense, you get gut gut. So these sattvic bars are not only experienced by a sadhik in this world, they're experienced more by those in that world. Of course. And the exact same thing goes on, but in the spiritual analogues of those elements manifested by Sandini, the existence potency. But how about the gopis? Now we're coming to the gopis. Right? <laughs> <laughs> only, the, only the gopis. Only the gopis can be called Mahabhavs, the embodiments of Mahabhav. Why? Because others have a body made of Sandini in which there's praying, there's Snaya, there's Rag, there's Anurag, and so on. But when it comes up to the stage, Anurag Asu Sambeda, Dasam Prabha, Prakashita. Now Prakashita sin, sin means, the speciality, what does Prakashita mean? It means that that Vritti of Samhita Ladini in the Chitta Vrittis becomes totally one with the mind and overflows and becomes totally one with all the senses and the entire body becomes the same as Mahabhav. So, Mahabhav Swarupa Sri Radha Thakurani. Is this also in Chandravati's group? Or only all the uh, group? Rudha Bhav is also in Chandravati's group. Only Adi Rudha Bhav is only in Radhika's group. But Chandra and her group can have it due to association. But we're talking here of Adirud. Because when you add a little manjista to the Kusumba, mm -hmm. it gets fixed. <laughs> but is this level Adirud or Rud? No, no, this is Ruda. Ruda. Yeah, because what are we discussing? Prakashita. Yeah. 
And in the explanation of Prakash, the Rupa Goswami is saying, Varamrita Sarupa Asri, Swasarupa Manonayet. The mind becomes completely one with the Srupa of Mahabharata. That means the entire Pran then expands through the rest of the body and causes Prakasita, this uh, five to eight satvic bars. But that makes them Swarup. You know, I'm not going to finish this verse today, but I just want to say one, just one last thing to finish because it's getting very late. But, um, no problem. Just to clarify it. 12.30, it's not that late. Just to clarify it, Maharaj. You know, because the verse came up, in the Brahma Samhita, and you see, Mahaprabhu quotes it in Chaitanya Charita, Ramananda Rai quotes it to Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Charita. It's a very, very important verse. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavi Tabi Tabi Ya Eva Nijaru Pataya Kalabi Goloka Eva Nivisatya Kalapamuta Govinda Mari Purusham Tamam Bajam what does it mean, Pratibhavitabi? Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitabi. Going back and forth. Prati means it goes back and forth. That means that when Krishna and Gopis meet, then Gopis' love manifests, intense Mahabhav, and they inspire that Mahabhav in Krishna. And then Krishna inspires them, they inspire each other, right? That's Prati. But what we should know is that Krishna can't experience that Mahabhav when he meets with anyone else. If he meets with uh, Madhya Shoda, if he meets with Coward Boys, if he meets with Rukmini or Satyabhama, because they don't have it, he can't experience it. Because Krishna, yeyatama So the only place he can experience this joy is actually when he's with the Braja Gopis. Right. So he's completely dependent on them. To know those feelings, his own feelings, he depends on them to know his own feelings. That's why I said the, uh, the yesterday, the verse of of Vishnu Day when he's on the bed of arrows and he started glorifying the gopis. When Krishna saw the separation of gopis in the Rasalila, he was Siddha, but he became Susiddha. Krishna's perfect, but he became more perfect, but he was only by, he learned so much about himself by the influence of the gopis. That's why it says, In Pande Dampati Chita, Brinda Bana Chatasa, Surit Saki Sukaliye, Vidya Vishad Viha. The meaning is Brindavan Chattasa. Brindavan is a university. Hmm? And there are two students in this university, Radha and Krishna. And there's a professor. Who is that? Hit Pandey. That means Professor Brain. The professor of love. Hmm? And the two students in the forest of Brindavan are studying. They're both learning so much from the professor of brain. Krishna and Achaya, Prem, Bhakta and Achaya, Apin and Achaya, Tina, Nachiya Katai. Prem makes Krishna dance, Prem makes the devotee dance, and Prem itself dances the three dance together. Huh? You know, I was saying that when you go into Shakshit, well, then you realize you're not the doer. So when Buddha Bhav comes in Krishna and the gopis, then they all realize that they're not the doer. And therefore, Shukadeva Goswami said, Rasul Sabaha Sampravito, Gopi Mandala Mandita, Yogeshwarena Krishnena, Tasamade Tayo Tayo. When the Rasli, after Krishna has come back, you know, he just, and then he came back, then the Rasli is actually beginning. So Shukadeva Goswami says, Rasul Sabaha Sampravito. Then the Ras, Rasa festival, the Raslila began. He doesn't say Krishna and Radhika began the Raslila. The Rasalila began. Mm -hmm. That means Prem is the doer. Mm -hmm. Yogishvara in the Krishna in that. Krishna is in the instrumental case. Krishna is not the doer of the Rasalila. He's just an instrument in the hands of the Prem. Mm -hmm. But you can only realize that you're an instrument in the hands of Prem when you go to Rudha. Mm -hmm. And you realize, like Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, a person who's risen up, then he knows I'm not doing it. See? Okay. So. It's, it's another one. So what we what we're trying to discuss here, Pratibhavi Dhabi. Pratibhavi Dhabi. Okay. So in Ayurveda, there's a way to make a medicine, medicinal herb, very, very powerful, potent, very strong. And it's called bhavana. Let's say you have some amla powder. Right? Amla powder. It has high vitamin C. So you have some amla powder, but you want to make this amla powder really powerful. So you take the amla powder and you can soak it in amla juice. So that's, that's called swabhavana because it's soaked in it's the essence of itself. So that's called swabhavana. And you leave it to soak there and it soaks it all up and becomes powder again. And then you take that powder and again you soak it in amla juice and you keep doing that. 
So when you do that again and again and again, it's called Bahus Swabhavana. So now it becomes really, really high potency. So that amla powder, that medicinal herb, which has gone through Bahus Swabhavana, being soaked again and again, so it has maximum potency, then that herb is called Bhavita. Bhavita. <laughs> so, Ananda Chin Mayarasa Prati Bhavita that means though the bodies of Radha and Krishna and Gopis are made of Sandini, they're being soaked in this ras again and again, again and again, again in Buddha Bhav to the maximum potency. In Buddha Bhav to the maximum potency. That they become Another one. Sin. That they become the bhav. that they become one uh-huh. with the nature of that Bhav itself, so she's Mahabhavsarup. This is the meaning of Mahabhavsarup. And it's indicated by the word Pakasita. Pakasita. Pra- Prakasita is the external manifestation. Prakasita means that the Satvic Bhavs have gone to the level of the Udipta. Udipta. But they can only go to Udipta because there's so much of Riti that the mind has become one with Mahabhav that it's overflowing and, and it now it's gone through the prana to all the senses and the whole body has become the same state as the mind. Otherwise Udipta cannot come. Yeah, yeah. Well, first the Swasam Day by Yudhasha must come. Without that the, the Udipta will not come. But then when that happens, and the entire body becomes Pratibhavita, infused and non-different from Mahabhav, then what happens? Then the Mahabhav overflows from the body even. It went from the mind. The mind became one with Rudabhav, then the body became one with Rudabhav, and then from the body it starts to overflow, and that's called Yavadashraya Vriti. Understand? Yeah. So that's why they mention in this order, one, two, three. And unless one, two, three, check means if. There may be Swasambha in the Dasha, but it's not Rudabha. Right. Until it becomes Prakashita, but it's not Rudabha. But if, check, if the Swasambha in the Dasha becomes Prakashita, and the Prakashita overflows and becomes the Avadasha, then Bhava Itta Vidhiyate. Uh-huh. Understand? So the overflowing, the over, Yavadasha Vritti means that the vibration, the vritti of Radhika's love spreads out from her body and affects everything around her. And that's why when Rupa Goswami is breaking down the anubhavs, you have asandhyana rinvilona, the churning of the hearts of those who are nearby. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And then when you go up to Adi Rudabhav, you have Brahmanda Shobha Karita, it disturbs the whole universe. Yeah. These are different degrees of Yavadashra. So nearby the whole universe? First nearby, Buddha, Adi Rudabhav. Well, it's a no Mohan. When he gets up to Mohan, then he will disturb the whole universe. Huh? So, for example, so all of these things are in, in the of Bhagavad I'll give an example. So, if you come into contact with a Mahapurush uh-huh. who's in that state of Rudra Mahabhav, then it goes out. Then, and then you happen to be there. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Yeah. Look, you see this. <laughs> no, look, this is the explanation of the verse. And I'll be touching here. Karuna Yavati Nabal. So, Marpaitum. Unnata Ujwala Rasa Maso Bhakti Swami. Mahaprabhu is giving Unnata Ujwala Rasa. How? Hari Purita Sundara Jyoti. He's not giving and no one's taking. It's just his golden effulgence. When you see it, you get it. Sadarya Gandharais Puratu Vasachina. Automatic. That's the meaning of the words. That's why he's going around. That his golden effulgence, that means that the Mahabhav is overflowing from him and giving and distributing. Wow. So, that's Yavadas Ravriti. And this is why the Manjaris, who are near, when Radha Krishna meet, very intimately, the Sakis have to go to the distance because their contemporaries and Radha will be shy in their presence. But the Manjaris who are younger, they're nearby, and so they get Vyat completely pervaded from head to toe with Radhika's Madhana So we don't want... Sakyaya Tema Manamostu Namostu Nitya, we bow down to Lilith Vishakati Tampaklata forever and ever. They are great, they are they are Seva Gurus and everything, we love them, but we don't want to be like them. Dasyaya Tema Marasostu the Sostu Satan. They want to be a Dasi of Radhika. Because though by Padmaryada, that means by status within the group, they have a lower status. But in terms of Seva Sobhagya, the fortune of the services they can remember, they are superior in that sense. So the Leet Visharinavas, they have more praying, actually. They have more praying than the Manjus. But the, the Manjus get to experience the Yavadash Vaibhuti of Radhika more. So they, they get to experience Madhanakya Mahabharata. Yes. Though it's not really... It's not in them. It's not in them. 
They don't have the sat of the existence of matter, but they get the vritti of it. By Yavadashray vritti. So give an example. You know, have you, do you know the Venu Geet of Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes. Venu Geet? You know the beautiful verse describing Jamuna? Najastada. Najastada. Oh, Hare Krishna. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone try to know five Geets. There are five Geets in, in Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Renu Geet, Prane Geet, Gopi Geet, Yugu Geet, and Brahma Geet. Make an ambition in your life that you learn these five Geets. Try every day. And then, though it may not be clear, but after some years, because you make the shape, the sanskar, the impression of the verses will be there in the heart. Just like an artist. Before they paint a picture, they in charcoal, they just draw the outline. Okay? So just study, learn it, make the outline in your heart. And then when you come into Rajarasi Vaishnav Sangha, they'll give all the colors <laughs> and finish off the painting. Uh -huh. But if you didn't make the impression, you cannot catch as much. You know, you can't. I used to chant it every day. Okay. 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 Now just One gopi saying, Oh, when Sri Krishna plays his flute, then the river Jamuna was flowing, but she becomes stunned. And so when one part of the water becomes stunned and the other is still coming, it turns into whirlpools. And then these whirlpools, the gopis, because they see their own mood in everyone, they think, See, if a woman is attracted to a man, then what happens is, even without thinking about it, no, they don't go to college to learn this, they just automatically do it. They, met, they um, arrange their hair. They start messing with their hair. When a man comes with their attraction to the stock room. Why? Because the body looks very beautiful. <laughs> so, and because... Braj gopis, they wear a gopi skirt and a veil like this, and it's across the body. So when you go like this, then the navel becomes exposed. And the navel is very attractive. So gopis see the whirlpool appear in the jamuna and think, oh, look at this. She's going like this and showing her navel to Krishna. <laughs> because they see their own, that's Sava Bhutesi, So she's very uh, affected by calm. Because it means brain. Mm. By the pure loving attraction to please the senses of Krishna, so she's showing her navel. But Krishna came there to the water and the waves rose up, up to his body. But Krishna's just looking here and there. He's not showing any attention to her. So then she's embarrassed that she made an advance and he didn't respond. So then she's super embarrassed about that. So the whirlpool breaks off the stem of a lotus flower and the waves of Jamuna carry the lotus flower, it's like she's falling at his feet and apologizing and giving the lotus flower. Because she embarrassed herself. This is Gopi is actually their own mood, but they're hiding it. They're thinking, if Krishna comes near to me, will I be able to control myself or not? And if I can't control myself and he doesn't respond, I'll be so embarrassed. These are their thoughts. But because they see their own bhav everywhere else, when they see the Jamuna, they think this is what's going on. So this is the meaning of the verse. But, we should, we should understand it in this way. It is those who are in Manjuri Bhav, who are extreme Radha Paksha, with extreme love for Radhika, they will think that it's not the flute singing of Krishna which is making the river become disturbed. The flute singing of Krishna is making Radharani become disturbed. And she's going into the state of Mohanakya Mohabhav, Adiruddha Bhav. And that has a quality called Brahmanda Shobha Kalekta. By Yavadashray Briti, her bath spreads out and disturbs the whole universe. So the Yuluna River is disturbed because of the separation of Radhika hearing Krishna's flute by the effect of her Yavadashray Briti. Understand? That's the meaning of the verse of Radha Paksha. Wow. Okay. Are we having fun here? Uh, is, that, <laughs> is that coming from your heart or did you? I think, we, I think we discussed this earlier, didn't we? Did we? He said that if he doesn't know, he'll say he doesn't know, and if he does, it's because he read it in Shasta. Where's that, where's that coming from? Oh, sure, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. 
Listen, let's not end. Let's just continue. We have to. We have to. Let's continue. <laughs> okay, listen. I tell you what. We'll con- listen. Listen. We're gonna continue. We're gonna continue for at least like eight hours. In North Carolina. Yes, come to North Carolina. Just <laughs> yeah. everyone. Yeah, I know yeah. you're going to do something else. No, no, no. We'll also do this. At least for the first two classes. I, I have a place for you to stay, Marge. You can come. Everyone can come. Everyone has a place to stay. Everybody. Yeah. Just everyone come to North Carolina. We'll continue. It will be like the extension of the Rabbit Tattoo Festival. Exactly. Wow. It will be like the Yabba Tattoo Festival of the Rabbit Tattoo Festival. Extending to another place. We made it on the Thursday. I have one program tomorrow in the yoga studio, and then one day traveling, and then it starts the next day. Okay, so we have to end there. Thank you for listening very patiently. I know it's not easy to understand, but I try to clear it. Yeah? Because if you, if you start with Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Swayam Prakash, Swayam Aswadi, everything, then later that, that hard work pays off. Right? If you go through it step, it, it pays off later when you come to the deeper writings. Mahabhava, when they say that he's tasting some of this material bhav, okay, so he, he never gets completely covered with Mahabhava like that. Look, he's, he's, he's a, a rati, he's sakuras, yeah. so he'll turn into sakurati. Right. Uh, but Madhumanda and Subha, mm. they can, that means their own anurag for Krishna, can touch the Mahabhava, but not in Madhuri Ras, in the own Ras. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Understand? Yes. It's not that they change from Sakya to Madhuri, yeah? mm-hmm. it's just that, you see, let's say um, Dashi goes so far through this right. Thai box, right. Vatsali goes so far, Sakya doesn't go as far as Vatsali, yeah? but with them they right. just touch, in their own, yeah. otherwise the whole theory, Rasa theory of Rubhava Swami is smashed. So you have, that's why you have to learn layer by layer, otherwise it becomes a kitchen in the end if you don't learn it in layers. Yeah. Okay, so we just little few high nouns out of respect for the transcendental harikata. And we pray that if there's something we didn't catch by the power of the holy name, it may appear like a sporty in our hearts. Lord Premanande.